Hi, welcome to the Teacher's Playbook. My name is Melanie Howell. I'm a fifth grade teacher, and today's video is all about my favorite books to read with my class. If you haven't done so, I hope you will consider subscribing to this channel. When I say my favorite books to read with fifth graders, I'm referring to a shared read where every child has a copy so that they're able to follow along as I read. Um, however, these books would be great read alouds as well. Now, every year, and I know I've talked about this before, but every year, beginning of the year, this is the best start of the year book. It is a home run year after year after year. This is Freak the Mighty. It's about two boys. They become friends, and by the end, they're more than friends. They're more like brothers. But it's, it teaches so many wonderful lessons, lessons about self-esteem, lessons about tolerance of those that are different, lessons about friendship and the power of friendship, family dynamics. I could go on and on. It's a great book, and it's always a fantastic first read. For, and it's not very intimidating for that beginning of the year when you're trying to feel your class out and see, you know, what level everybody's on. So it's not very long, therefore it's not very intimidating. And the kids just love it. They just love Freak the Mighty. It's a great book. At this point, I can go one of two ways. I sort of feel my class out, and if I feel like they haven't gained enough confidence in reading um, through Freak the Mighty, then we'll do sort of an easier book. Uh, however, if the class feels a little more advanced, I have a different book. So my book for, we need um, a shorter book to, we need more time to build confidence in our reading. Um, I need to spark more joy possibly in the excitement of reading. If we need time to do more of these things, my second book is Matilda and honestly, I've loaned a copy out and I couldn't find one for this video. But Matilda is a classic, classic author. And here's the kicker. Most of the kids have seen the movie, which normally I would shy away from. However, in this case, I like that most of them have seen the movie because that gives my more reluctant readers prior knowledge. Even though the movie's not exactly like the book, it's still confidence building that they already kind of have an idea of how the story is going to go and how it's going to end. But when I get a group and the majority of them already love reading and they're so excited, this is the next book. It's so wonderful. This is the Mysterious Benedict Society and it too is always a home run. Now I will say it's um, almost 400 pages. So yes, some of my readers will look at just the size of the book and think, oh my word, what, what are we doing? And that's when I remind them how much they loved Freak the Mighty and do you trust me to pick out another good book for you? Because I always say that if you don't like reading, it's because you haven't found the right book yet. And I don't even know where I heard that. But somewhere along the line, I read that or heard that. And so I've used it with my class as well. This is a fantastic book. It grabs their attention right away because it um, is about four gifted children and the, these crazy tests that they have to take to become this elite team, the Mysterious Benedict Society. And then by the end of the book, they've saved the world. This is the book I use when I'm introducing external conflict versus internal conflict uh, because each of the four members of the Mysterious Benedict Society have their own um, personal journeys and you get their whole backstory and that builds towards their internal conflicts. There are just so many wonderful elements you can pull to teach from this book. I've already gotten my class, <laughs> when we're reading, um, someone will go, oh, what a great simile or that's a metaphor. Did you catch that personification? This is a fantastic book. So well written. My next book is an actual mystery. The Westing Game. It's an older book. It's been around forever, but children always love it. I will say that I, when I pass this book out to my class, I tell them that the most difficult part about this book is keeping track of all 
of the characters because it's a mystery and we learn about what is a mystery and what are the elements of a mystery and red herring and all those types of things. So I give them a little um, detective book where basically, you know, just a packet where they keep track of the different characters and the different clues. And at the end, I will show the movie that was based on this book. The movie is called Get a Clue. And I make a big deal to the students about the fact that it is the worst movie ever made. I you know for days I'll say, oh no, it's time. I've got to show you all that terrible movie. Now, of course, it's not a terrible movie, but if I make a big deal about it being a terrible movie, then they're even more engaged in the process. And the last page of the detective book or the packet is when we watch the movie, they keep track of all the differences between the book and the movie. And that's a lot of fun for them to do. And by the time it's over with, they all go, oh, can you believe they did this? They changed this. Hey, isn't that every reading teacher's dream? The book was better than the movie. Forgive me people that made Get a Clue, but it really does keep them engaged and we watch it every year. Usually around January when we're coming back from winter holidays, we start my favorite book of the year, Roll of Thunder, Hear My Cry. This classic book, this classic book teaches so many wonderful lessons. Again, I know I keep saying that, but it, but they really do. This is historical fiction, um, 1939 Mississippi. I do um, spend the money to get a few extra copies, or my school spends the money, to get a few extra copies so that I can give a copy to parents ahead of time and tell them this is a book we're going to read because it's historical fiction and it's accurate and it's 1939 and it's Mississippi, and there are some racial slurs in this book. While it's not something I would normally expose fifth graders to, within the context of this book, I feel like it's okay because it's historically accurate. For many of them, Roll of Thunder, Hear My Cry is the first book they read where the ending is not just everything works out and you know everybody skips away happy. Uh, Mildred Taylor the author sort of leaves an ambiguous ending where we're then able to have a discussion you know well considering how corrupt things were within this town do you really think this character is going to get a free trial and be set free or do you think he's going to be another victim of a very corrupt system? Uh, which I know is really sophisticated discussion for 10 year olds to have, but I think it's fantastic for them to express their opinions about such serious matters. At the beginning of each year, I tell the students that yes, we're going to have different shared reads throughout the year that go along, you know, simul that I, we do simultaneously with independent reading and different skills. But my job is not to pick out a book that I think everybody will love. My job is really to pick out a variety of books and that way let's just help you figure out what kind of book it is you really like. And that's where I came up with the idea to celebrate this book. Again, an older one, but such a classic, Mrs. Frisbee and the Rats of Nim. This is a book I chose primarily because all of the uh, main characters are animals. It's an, ad I wanna say it's an adorable story because it's about mice and rats, but I shouldn't call it adorable. It's clever, it's very clever. And the children, I wasn't that first year or two, I wasn't exactly sure how they were going to react to you know, trying to imagine all these mice living in a mansion and reading books and, but they really get into it and totally because of the way the author has built the backstory, it almost seems plausible. And you know, it's a good book when something that's so ingrained in fantasy, you can almost convince yourself that it can happen. That's a good book. Mrs. Frisbee and the Rats and Them. The last book I want to talk about for this video is one of my new favorites, Refugee. This book 
wow, my kids are, they would sit and read this book all day if we could just hang out in the classroom all day. They love it. They love, they just love it. It starts off with a explosive beginning, lots of action. Um, if you have any boys in your class who are sort of reluctant readers, this book it is so quickly paced that they just love it. And I don't know. It's there's it's magical. It's just magical. It's fantastic. It's three stories in one, and I love the way the author um, has told these stories and the common threads that he brings through all the stories. Um, the first story is 1939 Nazi Germany. The second story is 1994 Cuba, and the final story is 2015 Syria. And my kids are still kind of blown away that we're reading a book about something that was only just in 2015? What? One of the most current events that they've read about within a book at school. How sad is that? But it's true. In Refugee, we read the f there's a pattern to the order of chapters. Every And the pattern stays the same throughout the book. It's always Joseph, Isabel, Muhammad. Joseph, Isabel, Muhammad. We read the first three chapters, so we're introduced to each of the main characters and the setting that they're in. So at that point, we stop and we make predictions, what we think the big idea or possibly a theme for the overall book might be. And my kids came up with some really great things. I was very impressed. Um, you know, their predictions were things like loneliness or hope or fear, courage, perseverance. And then I threw one in that, I think I got this off the Scholastic website, abdication of responsibility and this alone makes the book so worth it because it's every time someone turned their head to the plight of the children in the story who are part of this refugee family even though it's three different time periods even though it's three different countries it's it's really fantastic and the children are noticing it more and more. It's becoming easier to see. They just haven't been asked to see such things before. We all know how precious teaching moments are, but it is worth every minute. My favorite books to read with my fifth graders. Don't forget to subscribe. I hope you like the video. Don't forget to subscribe.